Hello everyone, I'm Krista Reimel with The Point Retreats, and I am here to bring you a short series of interviews um, focusing on COVID-19, but really looking at things from a factual, not fear-based perspective, and doing what we can to elevate the information that's being shared, provide hope in a time when I think it's needed, and really to make sure that we create this culture of what we can do together. I've been very fortunate to have a number of phenomenal healthcare colleagues who've taken time during uh, a busy season of their professional life to talk with us to really get this information to you. Um, I have a really special guest with me today. She's bringing in a different perspective for us. Um, she's deeply embedded in the medical system, but her focus is to really look at how people are doing from a psycho, psycho social, emotional standpoint. And as we continue to live um, through this, it's really important that we have um, healthcare providers that are really addressing people's needs from the holistic paradigm. And um, I'm gonna ask Melissa to introduce herself here in a moment, and she's gonna give us some great information on um, how we can take care of our, our mental health right now and resources for us um, in the community as many of us are seeing uh, you know, time off from work and businesses closing down. What Melissa can bring is really imperative at this point. Um, I do want to put out a couple of medical disclaimers as I am with every interview. Please remember that I am talking to medical professionals and as we're all aware, the situation does change daily and often. So what we're sharing today is what we know today. And if you have any questions that are really specific to you and your health, we do ask that you still reach out to your primary care clinician and or clinic um, to get advice specific for you. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce Melissa. Um, she's currently at work today, so I am grateful that she's taking her lunch break to talk with all of us today. So Melissa, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, my name is Melissa. I am an LICSW. I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker. So I have my bachelor's degree in generalist social work practice, and I have my master's degree in clinical social work, so mental health. So I work in outpatient mental health at a clinic. I'm part of one of the big hospital systems here in the Twin Cities area. Mm -hmm. So I spend Monday through Friday during the day in clinic where I provide outpatient mental health care. Mm -hmm. And then I spend evenings and weekends in the emergency rooms around the metro area. So I, I work in two of the St. Paul, Minneapolis emergency rooms. And then I cover just under a dozen rural hospitals mm -hmm. via telehealth for their emergency rooms. Wonderful, so yeah, you're gonna be seeing a lot in the upcoming days. I mean, as people um, get sick and then they also are struggling with having their usual resources or support systems, that makes for a really challenging uh, combination. And so grateful for people like you, Melissa, who are helping people get through that so they know that they have support in place as best as they, as best as they can right now. Um, and, you know, one of our foundational um, pieces in promoting this is, is really to help people have good information, but without the fear. And, um, you know, I think we're all listening to some national news, which is okay, and everybody's doing the best that they can. But personally, I listen to mass media, and even 15 minutes and my anxiety is going up, and I'm like, oh. and then after all of these interviews, what I have found is my anxiety is like, okay, like I can breathe again. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, what we all need. We need reliable sources, but we need yep. to kind of breathe and just remember we're going to be okay. There are people yep. like you and the doctors and nurses that are working really hard to keep everyone well and safe. Um, so with that, thank you for being here. And, you know, yes. really what I want to ask you is, you know, what are you, how are you seeing this pandemic um, affect people emotionally and socially? So something that we're doing here in clinic is which is something we've never done. We are going through every chart that we have, every upcoming patient for the next quite a few weeks. And we are triaging now ahead of time. So we're determining who has urgent need, yeah. meaning, you know, from a mental health standpoint, their safety is going to be compromised if they're not receiving um, mental health care yeah. or they're more likely to end up in the emergency room for a mental health related emergency. Okay. Or health-related emergency if they're not receiving mental health care. Yeah. And we are prioritizing those patients. And we are asking that any of our patients who are deemed non-urgent don't come in. Mm -hmm. We are 
really enforcing the quarantine here, even at the clinic level. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that with psychiatry, with outpatient mental health, with primary care physicians. And I'm finding that everyone is really uh, just taking it well. No one has fought back on it. Mm -hmm. I spent all day yesterday on the phone with patients, just calling and saying, how are you doing? How is this impacting you? You know, we have an appointment tomorrow or we have an appointment in two weeks. Do you think that you're okay without seeing me right now? Mm -hmm. And most people are saying yes. Most people are not wanting to come in. Sure. Um, some are not. Some are saying, I definitely need to see you and I'm definitely still coming. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely appropriate and fine. And we're leaving the door open. I'm still right. here every day. Yeah. So even if I don't have back-to-back -back patients like I normally would all day, I'm still here and I'm reminding everyone if at any point um, your anxiety is spiking or you're not sleeping well at night, you're finding you're more fearful than usual. Mm -hmm you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or hurting anyone else, or you're mm -hmm. severely emotionally distressed, come in, I will see you. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're just doing our best to, to keep that quarantine and people are really great about it. Yeah. Everyone wants to stay healthy. And I think it's that proactive calling two weeks ahead of time. Yes. That's, that's helping. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that you're taking a preventative approach. And I think that is something that's definitely, um, you know, <laughs> I, something I want to share with people is, is we're not just reacting to this, which is, there is a big part of this. This is the first time a lot of our healthcare systems have had to actually implement what they had in place for a pandemic. And so there's a big learning curve for everyone right now. And the fact that you're able to take that time to help, you know, um, see and talk and, and comfort patients from a preventative angle is so crucial. And I applaud you for taking the time to do that. And um, one thing is, as Melissa and I were talking a little bit before our conversation and interview here, I was really um, pleased to hear all the things that you could say are going really well in your healthcare system, like the plans are working. Um, so if you can just share a few of those things, um, as, as you just did, you know, kind of expanding that on the global healthcare perspective, that would be great. Yep. So here in clinic, we have a few different things set up. At some of our metro clinics, not at the one that I'm at, but at some of them, we're doing curbside triage. So if you have any COVID-19 symptoms, you're getting triaged in your car uh, by, and determining then if you need testing and, and going from there. Uh, and then in our waiting rooms, we just have chairs plucked all over the place, mm -hmm. six feet apart. Mm -hmm. And as soon as one of our patient checks in, there's a doc, there's somebody immediately telling you, our, our head physician here at my clinic came to my door four minutes before my 10 a.m. patient yesterday mm -hmm. and said, most of your patient's here. Wow. And I was like, okay, I haven't even checked yet to see if they yeah. checked in. Yeah. Like, yep, here, let's go. Yeah. We're getting patients immediately out of the public area. Mm -hmm. They come into my office, they hand sanitize right away. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, go about our session, but we're propping every door open mm -hmm. unless we're in session with the patient. Mm -hmm. So nobody here has to touch any doors at any point, mm -hmm. walk through the clinic, um, we have in our emergency rooms for our mental health patients, we have screening questions. So if one of our, cause we have a locked mental health suite at, mm -hmm. at our emergency rooms. Mm -hmm. So they come through, they come kind of to the center of the emergency room and then there's this locked suite that they come into. Mm -hmm. So we're even bringing them into the suite. We're first screening them for the virus. Mm -hmm. And if they have any of the symptoms associated with it, and they can stay in an outside room, mm -hmm. not in the locked suite, they're staying in an outside room. If they have the symptoms and they need to be in a locked room anyway, they're going in. But then instead of us seeing them face to face, mm -hmm. we're introducing ourselves face to face. We're waving at them from the hallway, introducing ourselves, telling them what the process is, but then seeing them via telehealth from the emergency room. Okay. Okay. So that's going on and so keeping that social distancing as much yep. as you can for both the patient yep. and for your own um, you know safety and I'm really impressed with the things that you just shared I mean I know healthcare systems have had to work quickly to implement these things and it sounds like I mean you guys are really like on point with um, being as preventative as you can which going is really well good to hear. yeah and we're, we are supported yeah so if if any of us need to be quarantined for any reason, mm -hmm. um, which is likely mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. interaction with patients, we are paid through our quarantine. 
There's been absolutely no discussion of our pay changing at any point mm -hmm. through the pandemic. And they're trying to get as many of us working via telehealth as possible. Yeah. yeah. So even those of us who, you know, I'm not a doctor or a nurse, but patients rely on seeing me face to face. Mm -hmm. The therapeutic exchange is very different mm -hmm. for screen like this via face to face, but they're getting as many of us set up as possible to be able to work from home, see patients via telehealth, mm -hmm. still provide care so that as many people as possible don't need to be waiting at yeah. least. Yeah. Yep. Bringing prescriptions out to cars. Mm -hmm. and triaging out in the parking lot that's brilliant yeah. I mean yeah. why you know don't have people come in have the nursing staff go out so yeah that's a brilliant idea um all really reassuring um measures that I'm hearing are happening in our community so that's that's yeah. really good to hear and I'm happy to hear that a lot of people have been receptive to you know working with you virtually because you know, I think everyone understands that it's best for protection of you and then also our healthcare providers. You know, we know we have a limited resource of them and you guys are, you know, in the high risk category. And so yep. we have to protect you too. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that people are, are receptive to new ways of, of receiving care. That's good, great news to hear. So Melissa, what advice are you giving your patients right now, you know, to ease their anxiety? And, and of course, you're working with people in a population that already has some mental health issues. So anxiety is, is very real in the population yep. you serve on a normal day. And then you add this on top of it. So how are you reassuring and working with your patients right now? What are you telling them? So most people, I'm trying to remind them that we can still create a sense of peace without knowing what's coming next. Mm -hmm. We can still find peace in all of this chaos that's going on, even without knowing what next week is going to look like sure. or next month is going to look like. I mean, people, people are talking so far out already to, mm -hmm. you know, the whole major league baseball season is going to be canceled. And there's these really big theories that are going on and being talked about. Mm -hmm. And what we need to be doing then in those times is bringing it back to what we know today, mm -hmm. right? This is all we know for today. This is unprecedented stuff. We've never dealt with this before yeah. in the mental health field, in the medical community, in our lifetimes at least. Sure. And it's rapidly changing, not even by the day, but by the hour sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I was telling you before we started this, that the amount of emails I get every single day. Mm -hmm. from my healthcare system, just updating us on what's going on. So when we are inundated with all this information, mm -hmm. what happens is we get in this place of fear of the future. Well, then what's going to happen next Tuesday mm -hmm. versus how can I create peace in knowing what I know right now mm -hmm. without having to know what's going to happen next week? Yeah. Yeah. You know, really good words and, and, and great to focus on what we can, right? So what we can, what we can do, and you can look at today in, in a certain, yep. with a certain perspective and through a certain lens. And it is, that's such a great point. Cause I've even found myself as I start to think next week, or I'm having conversations with friends or family or colleagues about a month from now, that is when I start to feel like, oh, you know, what is that going to look like? And you can't do a month from now. <laughs> you can only do today. So no, we can really great. do a week from now, right yeah. now. Yeah. We just don't know. And we, when we're in any place of suffering in life, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, mm -hmm. we create more suffering by fighting it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, when we fight that suffering, then we create this unending suffering. Mm -hmm. And that's the place that a lot of people are finding them in, which is, um, there's not enough toilet paper, there's not enough food, there's, you know, my kids are driving me crazy, or I don't know how to homeschool, or for a lot of us that are, you know, frontline healthcare workers, mm -hmm. I need to be at work all day. Mm -hmm. How am I going to homeschool? How is this even, how is this even going to happen? And that's what gets that anxiety spin going in your head yeah. versus am our are all of us feeling some sort of suffering right now? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And the more that I fight that and say, well, this is horrible and I don't like it and I don't have what I need or I'm scared of what's gonna happen, the, the more it's just churning those suffering waters instead of focusing on what do I need to feel peace today? What do I need for today? 
Yeah. So yeah. for my nine year old, I ordered him a three dozen baseballs on Amazon. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. Amazon is still delivering. I might have a different message of peace if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but he, for his birthday a few weeks ago, he got a net to practice batting and pitching. Mm-hmm. So I ordered him three dozen baseballs because mm-hmm. that's going to bring him some peace this weekend when he can't be playing with friends, mm-hmm. even though they're next door. Right. And we can't be going and doing anything. Okay, here's your piece. This is going to give you some peace this weekend. Right. right. And I'm trying to figure out what to do, you know, for my older kids as well. We've been wanting to make raised garden beds. Yeah. I think we're going to make raised garden beds this weekend. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to find something to do for the day. Mm-hmm. Give us some sort of peace for that day. And then the next day, we'll deal with the information that comes then. That day. Yeah. That is such great wisdom and perspective and such a like it's it's simple but it's actionable right so if everyone can start their day with just saying what's one thing i can do today that bring that will bring me peace and for your son it was baseball and Mm -hmm. for your teens it might be you know we've had this goal of doing this and you're probably usually really busy with them running a million places but today you're not so today that can bring you peace and I think that's really centering and, and um, a really brings a really good perspective to n- not get in, caught in the spiral of tomorrow, next week, next month. Um, mm-hmm. So thank you for sharing that. And I can see where that brings your patients a lot of peace because yeah, what you stay with today? what you can do and today yeah. you have a different outlook and perspective. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And it's really the same for healthcare professionals too, because I have been uh, talking with a number of them and, um, you know, intercepting some different calls from them and and the stress is escalating with them also for really valid reasons. Um, And of course, there has to be an element of preparation on that side of things that you have to think about. But I think, again, just when you're starting to feel out of control with the thoughts and the stress and anxiety, bring it back down to what you just said. What do we know right now? Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. find peace today without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if tomorrow I'm going to be working from home, seeing patients via telehealth, if tomorrow I'm going to be in one of the emergency rooms, yeah. if tomorrow I'm going to be covering the rural hospitals. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. And so today I'm finding peace in the patients that I already met with this morning, mm-hmm. checking on my staff here. I sent out a big email to all the staff. Uh, Monday it was just saying, Everyone is stressed. The system is stressed. Mm-hmm. So come to me if you if you need a place mm-hmm. for ten or minutes to just say any of those things. My kids are driving me nuts, or I'm out of toilet paper, or yeah. there's so many people here, <laughs> you know, patients. Yeah. Come to my office, talk about it, take that 15 minutes, yeah. and let's recenter ourselves and get get some peace back, and then we can go about our day. Mm-hmm. Mm, you are so critical and important in what's happening in the healthcare system right now. And how do you feel like your colleagues are doing? I mean, do you feel like everyone is able to kind of stay centered and calm right now? Or are you starting to feel an escalation within the healthcare workers of stress? I, I think everyone is staying rather centered and calmed. I do. Good. Good. That's I really what do. To hear. I think I, I haven't seen a lot of it. Yeah. Um, it's certainly more stressful in the emergency rooms than it is in the clinic. Mm-hmm. And on one of my calls this morning, we're, we're doing a huddle every morning with the mental health team and just checking on how everything's going. Her supervisor said, we are probably more safe here in clinic than we are at Target, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's mm-hmm. the safety <laughs> place here. So I think most people feel pretty safe here. It is a little bit different in the emergency room, but um, I'm... I am personally really pleasantly surprised by the general public and how much people are staying out of clinics and emergency rooms. And that's a really good point to make because, um, you know, it, when you hear all of the worst case scenarios, it's hard if you get a couple of symptoms to not go to the worst case scenarios. And for the general population, the general healthy younger population, it is really best to stay out of the clinics, stay out of the emergency rooms, that's helping everybody because um, yep. really our, the healthcare providers need to keep themselves healthy and well and, and be exposed to things at as minimum of a pos- as possible. And our high-risk patients have to be the people that 
you save yourself for really right now. And, um, you know, I think as we've heard in CDC and Minnesota Department of Health and the World Health Organization, the average healthy younger person is going to be okay and have very mild symptoms. Yep. So stay home if that's or what you have. Might exactly. not even know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and or do your telehealth, right? Like, I mean, yeah. use yep. the way that people are trying to be creative in helping mm-hmm. getting medical advice. So, yep. Um, yep. so that's really good to hear, Melissa. I'm happy to hear that. And I hope that's the same in the emergency room as I know you're heading there um, in the next couple of days too. So, mm-hmm. so getting back to kind of the change that's happened for a lot of people with, um, you know, probably needing more community resources. Uh, as a lot of people's personal and professional lives have changed and will be changing more, you know, in the next month or so. What is out there now? Like, who's still open? I mean, are a lot of our community resources still open? And if so, who and where would you recommend people turn to right now? So that's, that's where this gets a little bit more real. Mm -hmm. They're not open. There's not a lot out there right now as far as care for people. Yeah. Uh, just last night, I had a girlfriend call me who had received absolutely horrible news and had to deliver it to her two children. Mm. And she called me sobbing. And she said, what do I do? I need, so- you need to get somebody to my house. I can't tell my, my kids this news. Mm-hmm. And I, I had to tell her there's nobody, there's nobody who can come. She lives in an area where there's typically a large crisis response unit Mm -hmm. that she could call and they would come to her house and they would help. Okay. And as of yesterday, that crisis response unit for, you know, all of Hennepin County decided they're not doing any more in-home care. They're only doing via phone. Okay. Um, And there are a lot of children can't be de-escalated via phone. So I talked her through it as best as I could. Um, I didn't go there because I've been in clinic. I'm here Mm -hmm. and it's not, you know, good for me to go there and then expose them to whatever I could potentially have or be around. But I talked her through it as best as I could. I told her to call me again today. Um, So that's just one example of a a lot of our resources that we would normally have are not open. There are very few, if any, mental health clinics that are still seeing patients face to face. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are switching to telehealth, mm-hmm. but also a lot of people who don't have the electronics needed to do telehealth at home. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Because they just don't have the resources for it. Um, clothing closets have all closed. Okay. Food shelves have closed to the general public, most of them at least. Okay. But the silver lining to all of this yeah. is we can still help. If, if I know that I'm not experiencing any symptoms, I've, I have no reason to believe that I'm sick, which right now I don't. Mm-hmm. And I have, you know, my kids home with me on Saturday. I can very easily call neighbor's food shelf. It's the largest food shelf in Dakota County. Mm-hmm. It's right in South St. Paul. They have been just over the top busy. I can call them and say, we're able to deliver food all day today to doorsteps. Mm-hmm. Where do you want us to go? And we can do that. We can, you know, you can uh, post on your local Facebook community page, right? And, and say, um, I'm going to Target. Does anyone need diapers, formula, wipes, mm-hmm. whatever it is? A lot of these places are closing because they have to. Right. But we as individuals can still be helping each other out mm-hmm. without spreading that contamination. Mm-hmm. So this, this is where it's going is we need to be helping each other. And I think that's a really powerful outlook right now. And if I hope it empowers people instead of, you know, makes them feel helpless because, you know, maybe this is kind of a wake up call, right, to our society that we have the ability to make a bigger impact than we think we do. And it's not just through, um, you know, the social, ironically, there is the social isolation, but then ironically, it's one of our times that we have the capacity and time to really do things that make a difference. So you just listed a couple of dynamite ways to do it. I mean, I know a lot of us are like, well, what do we do with our kids? They're going stir crazy and, you know, we're going stir crazy. And so how can you help? Like, what can you do? And it doesn't have to even be, you know, there are those big things you can do, like fill up your van and deliver food. 
um, yep. for a food shelf that is still open. Or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's just, do you have a neighbor, like you said, who maybe they shouldn't get out? You know, maybe they have a newborn, maybe they have an elderly parent. Um, yep. And, or maybe they're a healthcare worker who's working like ugh, double shifts, like crazy times. So what can you do for yep. them? Reach out to them. Um, yep. And just reach out and ask, yeah, do you need yeah. anything? Yeah. And reach out to the, or the agencies are still open. They're operating. They're just not mm -hmm. letting anybody in. Sure. And, they're, sure. and they're not going to home visits. So county social workers, for example, Washington County, Dakota County, Hennepin County, whatever, with their vulnerable adult population mm -hmm. or their um, you know, mental health population, mm -hmm. child protection workers, they're doing a lot. They're trying to do a lot over the phone sure. or telehealth. Yeah. And so a lot of these places are still open. We just need to get creative mm -hmm. with how we're going to access the resources mm -hmm. and, and go from there. Yep. And you know, when you have time, we can all be creative. Um, so yes. It's a good time to start to think about it. Yeah. One, one thing that a lot of people are doing with their time right now is purging, which is a great thing to do with all of this time, right? Yeah. All of us constantly talk about how we have no time to get anything done. Yeah. Because running to sports all night, you and I both do that constantly, right? We get done yeah. with work and sport crazy. We have time now to be doing things. So mm -hmm. as you're going through your house and getting rid of things, post it. Mm -hmm. Who needs this? Mm -hmm. Is anyone who, who needs, um, you know, it could even be toiletries that you're not, that you're not using anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I have this dry shampoo that I tried once and I don't like it. Does anyone need this? Yeah. And you just rub it down with a little sanitizer and you drop it off on somebody's front doorstep. Yeah. yeah. And it's a way to get resources to other people, but then also being mindful of not overusing resources. So obviously one of the only things that's still open are grocery stores. Mm -hmm. and we need to be careful that we're also not overusing resources. Yep. You take only what you need mm -hmm. and go back a couple days later. Yeah, that is really important. That's a big part of us being a community together yes. right now is using yep. our resources wisely. Um, yep. You know, whether it's our time or our few supplies, you know, that we're going for, but yeah, hoarding at this time is not going to really help you or the next person. Um, so that's, yeah, I'm glad you brought that to light. Thank you for that. What about crisis lines? Are those still open? So if someone's really in crisis, mm -hmm. um, crisis. whether it's a suicide hotline or a, yep. you know, outreach, um, you know, family services hotline. Yep. So text to talk is always still open. Okay. So that's the crisis text line in Minnesota. That's 741741. And if you text that, the first text you're going to get back is going to say, here are some mental health resources and coping skills immediately. Okay. Your second text is going to be their disclaimer. And then from there, you can start talking. I always like to let people know that right away so they don't text them and then think, oh, great, they sent me resources. Yeah. Nope, it's just the original. It's just the first text that comes through and then Sure. So that is still open and available. Okay. That's a great resource. Crisis. Yep. I'll, and then you can just text, which is wonderful, especially for teenagers. Yeah. Because teenagers love to text, right? Young adults. Uh, all of the county crisis lines are still open. Okay. All of your primary clinics are still open. Yeah. I would call your primary clinics. You know that they're staffed mm -hmm. and that there's people there that are ready to help. Mm -hmm. And that's the advice I'm giving to all my patients that I've been kind of triaging and canceling too, is if at any moment you feel like you need immediate mental health care, call the clinic and ask to speak with me mm -hmm. and we'll get you in. It's mm -hmm. not that I can't see you. It's that we're choosing to limit who we're seeing based on need. Yep. Yeah. So go, when in doubt, definitely call your primary care clinic. A lot of churches are offering services or even daily devotionals on their Instagram pages yeah. or their websites. Um, there's a lot of, uh, th there's a thing called, what is it called? Art reach. That's offering a different art prompt every day oh, cool. for kids, kids to do at home. Yeah. So like one day was dig through your recycling and make a robot, mm -hmm. whatever you can find in your recycling. Hmm. I, I'm not going to be able to think of the other days right now, but there's a bunch of you know, online workouts that you can be doing. Peloton extended their free trial to 90 days right now. Oh, and they have wow. every single kind of workout. Mike Bjornsson from your point team mm -hmm. is doing stuff online and Katie Bjornsson. Mm -hmm. um, there's 
I would encourage people that when you are feeling in crisis about this and your anxiety is spiking and you're nervous and you're scared, yeah. turn to one of these other things. Yeah. Uh, a and I active step for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, going back to what is going to give me peace right now. And mm -hmm. if the only thing that's going to give you peace is talking to somebody, then call your local county crisis line, use the Minnesota text to talk, mm -hmm. call your primary care clinic. Yeah. Call a friend, FaceTime a friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it works. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of the great benefits of having all these ways to connect right now. I mean, you can, you can text a crisis line, you can virtual chat and interview yep. you can, um, you know, have a gathering of friends, you know, virtually. I mean, don't, you don't have to, because we're isolating, you know, in person doesn't mean you have to isolate mentally and socially, right? You just have to be creative, which is what you've already brought to light. Be creative. There's also, as far as resources available, a lot of online therapy resources. Hmm. So okay. headspace.com is a really popular one. Can you say Better, that again? Headspace. Headspace. Okay. Headspace. Uh, Betterhelp.com is a really popular one. Uh, let me look at, there's teen counseling. Um, Talk space yeah. is another really popular one. So these are online therapists. Okay. Long before this pandemic. Right. But uh, you, it's all HIPAA protected, just like any other therapy is. And, and you go on and you log on and you get connected with a therapist. I have a lot of patients who actually end up doing that because my mm -hmm. clinic hours are eight to four. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work for a lot of people. Sure. So get them to a place that they're feeling okay. Mm -hmm. Like they don't need the in-person as much anymore. Mm -hmm. They'll stop working with me and they'll switch to one of these online therapists who are available all the time. That is so, brilliant. Yeah. I, I wasn't familiar. I, I wasn't familiar that those were out and available, but that's a great oh, resource yeah. for people right now. Yes. Another really awesome part of it is heads. The headspace website mm -hmm. is providing free therapy to all medical professionals with your NPI number. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Right. So anyone in healthcare, yeah. with an NPI number yeah, and go to the headspace.com website yeah. and you can get free therapy throughout this pandemic. Thank you for sharing that, Melissa. And I don't know if everyone realizes how critical that is, but prior to this pandemic, we were seeing a lot of new statistics coming out around PTSD, burnout, depression, high suicide rates and doctors and nurses. Uh, social workers, therapists, you know, respiratory therapists, x-ray techs, just the healthcare profession was really suffering. And now this is going to take a really big toll. I actually went to bed last night and my biggest concern was my healthcare colleagues because I know what they're starting to face and it's going to be a hard time for them. And I worry in a few months from now, the ramifications of that. So, um, Supporting our healthcare professionals on top of those in need in our community are equally as important. Um, you know, think yeah, of how absolutely. fearful we're feeling when you hear the news and then we can go home and retreat. Well, you guys are doing just the opposite. You're going right yeah. into where you know you're going to face some of the hardest cases and the hardest situations. And mentally, healthcare professionals are really good at kind of putting our gloves on and doing that for X amount of time. And then there is this wall that's hit, whether it's lack of sleep, family stress, um, patient, um, you know, death, um, and it takes a passion toll. Fatigue. Yeah, yeah. Passion fatigue. I mean, it happens. And and mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that you shared that resource. So if I can ask you to say it just one more time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's headspace.com. Head so H-E-A-D-E-S-P-A-C-E. And then it'll ask you for your NPI number. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then you can get free therapy. So okay. otherwise, typically these online therapy sources are anywhere from 45 to $85 an hour, depending on the different resource. Mm -hmm. I have a lot, of, a lot of the patients that I know of that use it often pay $45 an hour okay. for therapy that you can do from your bed or your couch. Right. It's right. really, it's really helpful. And I've been referring tons of my patients to it right now. Oh, it's such a good resource. Thank you for yeah. Headspace doing what they do um, and sharing that. And so Melissa, I think, you know, you've, oh, you've shared a wealth of information for people to know where they can go right now and what they can do. And then as, you know, some of these um, closings lift, which they will, 
then well, I would love to talk again. So you can, you know, share resources for more specific things, you know, around housing, medications, unemployment, social support, because um, they will open up and become even more available. But for now, there's still a lot of ways you can stay in touch with professionals such as yourself. Um, you can stay in touch with your friends, your family, and your community. And this is maybe our call to action to kind of rise and do more for one another, um, which is a, a really okay silver lining to find in all of this. It is. Um, it is. When we are feeling powerless, we find our power somewhere. Yeah. And so if we, are, if we are powerless to all the chaos that is going on around us, mm -hmm. we can find our power in calming some of that chaos. Mm -hmm. a little bit in whatever in whatever way that is yeah. whether it's something you're doing at home or any of the other things that we talked about right to to find help but that's where we it's the powerlessness that that gets to people mm -hmm. it's the being told no no you can't go to a restaurant no you can't leave your house no you can't and that's where that's where it stems from is is the being told no this boundary where there used to not be a boundary mm -hmm. and so then we need to find our own ways to find power in those situations. Perfectly stated. And I think if anyone is listening to this, they'll hear that there are a lot of yeses too. Yes, I can still do this. Yes, I can still do this and that. And so here are the yeses in this and try and see um, the opportunities in it too. It's a, it's a mind shift, but it works. I mean, it helps. I have for you, Krista, a list of all the restaurants right now that we know of in Minnesota that are offering free lunches every day for kids. Oh, it's a very long list. I was planning on reading it and then I double checked the, there's a social work page on, on Facebook for Minnesota social workers. Okay. I double checked it today to see if anything else has been added. And there are so many, Yeah. it would take me 10 minutes to read them all. So I'm going to type them up for you by city in alphabetical order and I'll send them. Wow. Thank you. To and maybe you can just attach them after this interview or something, but there are so many restaurants that are offering free lunches for kids every day. That is so exceptional that these restaurants are doing that. Um, yep. So thank you for putting that list together. We will absolutely share it and reshare it. And I hope other people will share it because um, yep. you never know who's in need in your own community. So that yep. is phenomenal. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that and putting that together yep. for us. So with that being said, my last question, and I'm ending all of my interviews with this for a few reasons, but how are you taking care of you right now during this time? So I made a, I made a list of things I want to get done with this mm -hmm. time. I'm kind of, I'm viewing it as a bit of a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm still at work during the day, yeah. You know, I get I get home at a reasonable time in, in the afternoon, you know, in the evening, and there are things that I can still do. I have spent so many nights in the car for four plus hours yeah. with my children, right? Just ping-ponging all over the city, just ding 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 yeah. to the different <laughs> sport. And we have we do have fun with it. Every Monday night we either get Jimmy John's or Subway because we eat in the car every Monday because we're going all over. And there are so many Mondays that I've just thought to myself, God, I just wish I could be home with my kids. Yeah. And so I'm trying to embrace that. We're yeah. home. We're home together. And, and I want to um, get some spring cleaning done. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to paint the dining room and paint my bedroom. And I've been asking the kids if they want to paint their rooms. And there's movies that we haven't seen on, you know, Disney Plus that we want to watch. And so it's just random house projects to get done. Yeah. And so I'm trying to take this as a bit of a forced sabbatical of all of the busyness of life that we typically feel mm -hmm. is going to slow down for a little while. And we are given this amazing gift right now of getting to get all of these things done mm -hmm. that we normally never have time for. And how great will it feel in however long it is mm -hmm. when this quarantine, you know, or this isolation is lifted yeah. and we get to go do all the things because I got all the things done. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I be I like, love it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll yeah. do that because my my house is organized and it's clean and it's painted and yeah. all, all those to do lists should be like non-existent in like six weeks yeah. from now. And then you have I more freedom. Think, yeah. We're detailing my car this weekend. Yeah. It's like it's been happened for a long time. We're going to team detail the car. Yeah, they're not as excited oh. as my <laughs> about the I team. Like, 
I love that idea. My kids are gonna be like, will you, will you stop talking to Melissa? She's giving you all kinds of really bad ideas. <laughs> They're like, great, that sounds horrible. But they are. They're awesome. And you're so right. How many days do we wish? Like, ah, oh, if I just had more time, if I just yeah. had more time. Well, most of us have some element of more time right now. Yeah. And so don't let it go to waste. Yeah. So that, that's how I'm taking care of myself is I'm just embracing it. Look at all this time that I've been given after every, you know, weeks and months and years of complaining that I have no time to do anything. Mm -hmm. I have all of this time now. Mm -hmm. So is it. Yeah, you're doing yeah. something with it, yeah. which is changing your mental outlook, I think, on all yeah. of this. I mean, throughout our whole conversation, you're very optimistic, you're upbeat, you're smiling, you're positive, and we all need more of that right now. We need those reminders. It's that going to be okay. Have that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It is. It's going to be okay. And it's going to be okay because we're all going to be together and, you know, make it okay. That's what yes. we're doing. And there's going to come a day that we celebrate the end of the isolation. Mm -hmm. And I'll be at your pool to do that, probably. <laughs> you are welcome. I will have a huge pool party <laughs> for all my healthcare colleagues that have graciously yes. given me their time, because I have now taken up your entire lunch hour, all right. as I've realized. So with that, I want to say thank you. You have shared a really good perspective, some much needed wisdom, and some great resources with everyone. And I hope everybody will share this, because we need to support each other. And Melissa has just given us a lot of tips that we can implement right now today. So Melissa, thank you. Very grateful well, for you. Thank you for taking care of others and we will be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Stay well. You too. <laughs>